YouTube, you sexy bitch. How's things going? Now, I recently purchased one of these off eBay, a Nintendo DSi, and also got one of these to go with it, which is an R4 SDHC Gold Pro flash card. And as I'm sure most of you know, the purpose of these cards is to insert a micro SD card into the back there, which is uh, loaded up with emulators, and then uh, play these on your DSi here. Now, one of the things which people seem to have a bit of trouble with when they come to these flashcards is getting a Game Boy Advance emulator working. And this was something that I was struggling with a little bit as well, and I needed to use a YouTube video that someone else had made to sort of try and get a bit of advice from it. And it was actually one of the comments in the video below which actually helped me get it set up and working properly. Now, someone else in those same comments didn't believe that it was actually possible to get the simulator working at all, uh, to the point that he was actually accusing the uploader of like faking it and just trying to scam people out of money. I don't quite know how that works, just from uh, YouTube, but never mind. Uh, but I decided I'm going to put this video together to actually prove that you can get a Game Boy Advance emulator working on your Nintendo DSi. So here's the flashcard. Here's the DSi with no games in the slot. Gonna pop that in. And we shall turn this bad boy on here. So just focus in a little bit better. So touch screen to continue. Now this is the icon that comes up for this particular flash card. Uh, I think this is to do with sort of uh, trying to bypass the latest DSi firmware. So click on that to go into the actual flash card menu. Click on this bit here for games. And then this is the icon here for the DSi uh, GBA emulator. So we'll click on him. Loading. Here we go. GBA emulator for DS, DSi and 3DS. Now the emulation on these games isn't perfect by any means. Uh, so I've just got to click the right folder, so GBA. Um, so as I said, the actual Game Boy Advance itself uh, is a 32-bit system, so it's a bit more harder to emulate this than things like your Genesis and Genesis? What am I talking about? Sega Mega Drive uh, and Super Nintendo. Um, but We'll just pick a game at random here, so we'll go for one of my favourites, Ninja Cop. So uh, just go through all these options here, and I just click on all the default ones, so just go through all of those, uh, go through the sound, and A to continue and ignore this, yes. And here we go, Ninja Cop working on a Nintendo DSi. and. Um, there's no way I could fake this because you can't actually fit any, you know, Game Boy Advance carts into the DSi. So go through start there, start, new game, easy, bank. Now just turn the sound up there. So. You see the sound is working, but it's you know a bit crackly, a little bit weird. Right, let's kill some bad guys. And despite the crackly sound, you know this is actually working at a good speed, you know. Eat shuriken death, bad guy. Oops. Quite hard playing this, uh, looking through the camera. But as you can see, so it's working well. A little bit of sound distortion, but you know, this is pretty good stuff. Right then, so I'm going to exit out of this and we'll just load up another one. So again, back through that menu here. You might be able to hear a lot of clinking going outside. It's uh, recycle people have just turned up to empty my recycle bins. Never mind. Uh, right, click on Nintendo DS emulator again here. Uh, navigate back to the Game Boy Advance folder. 
Uh, and what shall we go for? Let us go for a bit of uh, Astro Boy Omega Factor. Oh, we've got two versions here. Uh, let's hope we pick a working one. Here we go, licensed by Nintendo. Again, this one I've already started a safe file on, so here we go Astro Boy Omega Factor. Got the start of this down, and uh, coincidentally, uh, this is actually one of the best ever Game Boy Advance games made by Treasure, who, are, as you probably know, like just absolute masters of uh, kind of all these types of games. I mean, this looks more like an arcade game than a Nintendo Game Boy Advance game. Absolutely love this game so much. As you can hear, sounds you know a little bit on the messed up side, but you know this is going at a good speed, perfectly playable. Let's see if I can remember how to activate the laser. Uh, let's see if I can get my bum laser working as well. Here we go. So working fine there. Uh, we'll just do one more, so <coughs> again, wax it out from there. Go back through the screen. Uh, select the simulator again. Uh, navigate back to the Game Boy Advance folder. Uh, and what we will do is a bit of, let's go for Street Fighter Alpha 3. Uh, as you can see a bit of graphical sort of glitching going on here but actually sounds working absolutely fine on this no problems to do with Hadouken without actually being able to hold it properly. Ah, uh, die Kami, you irritating bitch. Oh, did a dragon punch as well. I'm awesome. Right, except I'm getting my ass kicked. Right. Kick. Oh, killed her with a head, uh, no, not a Hadouken, a dragon punch. Ray. Right, well, anyway, so uh, that's that. Basically, as you can see, Game Boy Advance emulator working absolutely fine on the Nintendo DSi there. Awesome stuff. We shall close out from that. Now what's worth also just mentioning as well um, is that initially what I actually bought was uh, one of these which is an R4 uh, Revolution for DS which is uh, one of the older carts and this was for my DS Lite um, and I've had a DS Lite for ages and this has just been sat around on one of my shelves gathering dust because I never play it because there's not really that many games on the DS Lite I actually like all that much 
Now the actual card here itself uh, worked absolutely fine and uh, it's brilliant with um, you know kind of Super Nintendo emulators, Mega Drive emulator, PC Engine emulator, Sega Master System emulator and all that um, but the GBA emulator would not work on this particular system. Now uh, the reason that I actually bought the DSi XL though and the new card wasn't because of that but it's just because of the fact that the Nintendo DS Lite has got the worst D-pad known to man. Uh, it just does not like doing diagonals and this isn't so much of a problem if you're just playing like platformers like you know your Mario games or Avengers Shinobi or something like that but any shoot 'em ups any sort of Street Fighter games where you need to be able to do those diagonals this is just the, the machine itself is just absolutely rubbish at it and it's not just that I've got a broken machine I kind of looked online and um, lots and lots of other people have um, had this problem as well so it does seem to be a bit of a, a fault with the DS Lite as far as I can see but luckily though the DSi does not have this problem and um, the D-pad on it is absolutely brilliant and uh, you know, it's perfect for your shoot 'em ups uh, for things like you know Thunder Force 4, Thunder Force 3, Truxton it's an absolutely uh, you know brilliant D-pad um, so yeah if you're having problems with your DS Lite I definitely would recommend upgrading to one of these and because of the fact I bought this second hand on eBay you know, it really didn't actually cost me that much I think it was about £30 but if you do get one of these just remember though that you might need to actually get one of these R4 cards uh, particularly as well if your firmware has been updated so that's one thing just to remember there well anyway, I uh, hope you found this video useful if this is an uh, um, emulation route that you're thinking about going down yourself. Uh, I have been Mr Thunderwing. Take care everybody.